What's the sign of the voltmeter reading in this situation? Talk it over. Think about what does it mean to have a higher potential? What does that mean in terms of the direction of the electric field? And we're evenly split. Okay, so what, is it, what does it mean to have a higher potential? What does it mean to have a higher potential? Electric field. If I have a potential difference, let's do it this way. Um, here's the electric field. Okay? And I travel a path from A to B, and my path is in the direction of the electric field. So I'm going to find a potential difference VB minus VA. Is that potential difference positive, negative, or zero? That's negative, right? This is less than zero because we said that electric field, if the electric field and the delta L, better marker here, the electric field and the delta L are in the same direction, then delta V is less than zero. Okay? So if that's true, which end is at the higher potential? In, in other words, which is bigger? Is VB bigger or VA bigger? VA is bigger, right? So this must be the high potential. This must be the low potential. Okay? Does that help? Maybe. Which, which end, front or back, is at the higher potential? The back, right? Because the electric field must point from, see, I mean, just like this situation, the electric field is pointing from a higher to a lower potential. That's another rule of thumb you can just keep in mind. The electric field always points from a higher to a lower potential. So if this is the higher potential, this is the lower potential in the front. We've connected the voltmeter's positive terminal to the lower potential. But the rule is it'll read positive if it's connected to the higher potential. So what's it got to read? It's got to read negative. Okay, so we are going to get a negative reading on the voltmeter. We're going to get a re negative reading on the voltmeter. Does that make sense? Is this, this okay? So the first thing you have to do is figure out what's the direction of the electric field, this E perpendicular. Use that to determine the higher and lower potential. And then just this rule, keep in mind that voltmeter reads positive if it's connected to a higher potential. Okay, so if it's, if it's not connected to the higher potential, it'll read negative. Okay. This is called, yeah, question. That's a very good question. That's a very good question, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. Okay. This is called the Hall effect voltage, once again. Now let's say the battery's potential, let's say the EMF of the battery is our typical 1.5 volt battery. Does that mean that's going to read negative 1.5 volts? No. What, what is, what's the potential difference would read 1.5 volts? Potential difference of top and bottom, right? Connected from this end to this end, right? So this is a different potential difference than uh, the parallel one, okay? The parallel one has to do with the E parallel. This perpendicular one has to do with E perpendicular, okay? So the question was asked, does it matter what the sign of the charge carriers is? And so that's our next question to answer. What if the charge carriers were positive? Now, first of all, could we even have positively charged mobile charges in this material? Any, anybody know? Any answers? Go ahead. Okay, so one, one uh, suggestion is maybe we have some po positive ions in the material. And in fact, if we've, we can deal with other conductors besides metals, we can have, uh, for example, aqueous solutions where there, are, there could be positively charged ions. Of course, then if it were neutral, there would also be negatively charged ions as well, and so you get kind of weird things going on there. Uh, in metals, it turns out that... Uh, if you had ions in there, they probably wouldn't be very mobile. You'd, they'd probably just stick. But what you, what you could have in certain types of 
materials, namely semiconductors, you can have what are called holes, meaning holes in the electron structure, sort of a deficiencies of electrons, okay? And these holes, if you think of it sort of as having our electron C, and then there is deficiencies in these electron C or electron structure, I probably a better name for it, the quantum electron states, where the absences of electrons essentially behave for all intents and purposes like they were mobile positive charges, okay? And so you can actually have situations, and this is these positively charged holes become quite important in lots of semiconductor applications, transistors and integrated circuits and all sorts of things like that, where the, you, you want to think about the difference between electrons moving one way or these positive holes moving another, okay? So let's imagine for the sake of argument that this material, this bar, is some sort of semiconductor which has positive mobile electrons, holes, uh, in its structure. And the electrons, there are no mobile electrons, it's just the holes that are mobile. If the mobile charges are positive, what direction would they move inside this circuit? Okay, so if they're positive charges, if they're mobile positive charges, they've got to be moving in the direction of the electric field because there's going to be a Q times E, force is going to be in that same direction. So a positive charge would be moving downward. So let's draw that. We still have the same bar magnet here, so we still have the magnetic field in this region pointing to the right. And let's see. What now is the direction of the magnetic force on a positive charge moving downward in this circuit? Okay, so they've got to now be traveling in the, or excuse me, the, uh, we know the charges are traveling in the direction of the electric field. So the magnetic force is going to be pointing out towards us still. Okay, because we've reversed the uh, direction of the velocity and we've reversed the sign of the charge. So V cross B, thumb points out, multiplied by a positive charge, thumb still points out, right? So it turns out we haven't changed the direction of the magnetic force because we've flipped the sign of the charge, but we've also flipped the direction of the motion. So the magnetic force is pointing in the positive Z direction. Okay. Well, what's going to happen now? We're going to get positive charges built up on the front, right? And negative charges built up on the back. So what's going to be the, direct, the sign of the voltmeter reading now? We're assuming that the only mobile charges here are positive. We're assuming the only mobile charges are positive. Um, you can have situations where you do have both, uh, but we're assuming that in this situation we just have these, these electrons essentially are fixed, and the, it's these absences of electrons that are essentially are, are mobile in, this, in the structure. Okay. So we're now we're going to get a positive reading on the voltmeter, right? Because we have the voltmeter hooked up in exactly the same way as we had it before. The plus terminal. It's connected to the front, negative terminal, connected to the back. But because of this polarization, we now have a perpendicular electric field that's pointing in the opposite direction, right? Pointing from the positive to the negative compared to the situation we had before. So the higher potential is at the front or back? Front, right? This is the high potential. The back is the low potential. We've connected the positive terminal to the higher potential, which means we're going to get a positive reading on the voltmeter reading. So this Hall effect voltage, this perpendicular or transverse voltage that we're reading, is different depending on the sign of the mobile charges. So this is the only way we've seen, at least so far, to determine the sign of the charges in uh, the sign of the mobile charges in some material, okay? 
Um, and this Hall effect voltage has a number of different te technological applications. We can actually use it to measure things like mobility or even the sign, or excuse me, mobility. Um, depending on what we're given, we can use it to measure a number of different quantities. And you'll be doing some problems with this. So here's a problem. Yeah, looks kind of looks kind of fun, doesn't it? But if you pick it apart step by step, it's one of these things where you can get through it. And it comes down to again looking at the forces acting on an individual charged particle. Okay, and, and essentially looking at the difference between positive or negative mobile charges. The I don't know if everybody can read this, but let's say we have a power supply here. The power supply has an EMF of 240 volts, and it's connected to one end of some bar of material. And my markers are dying again, so let me just draw this in blue. We have a bar of unknown material coming out towards us like so. And we have the positive end of the battery connected to the, the back. We have the negative terminal of the battery connected to an ammeter. This is the negative terminal of the ammeter. And this is the positive terminal. So that's going like so. So this is just going to measure the conventional current in the circuit. And then we have a bar magnet here where this is the south pole and the back is the north. And we have a distance between here of, was it uh, 20 centimeters? So the distance from the bar magnet to the, uh, to this material is 20 centimeters. The Hall effect voltage, this perpendicular voltage, we are measuring with a voltmeter. And we find it's equal to uh, positive 1.2 times 10 to the minus 5 volts. The positive terminal is connected to the bottom. The negative terminal is connected to the top. And we are given some dimensions for the bar. Okay, It has a thickness of 0.1 centimeters. It has a length of 12 centimeters and a height of 2.5 centimeters. And there's a bunch of questions we can ask. Are, are the mobile charges electrons or positively charged holes? What is the magnetic dipole bar, uh, moment of the bar magnet? Which seems like a stretch. How in the world can we possibly find that out? And what does the ammeter read? Okay, what's the current in the, in the circuit, including the sign? Well, let's just, let's just start with the first one. We'll come back to this problem next time. Are the mobile charges electrons or holes? Well, the thing that you have to do, just one general tip for doing these types of problems, is to first start by drawing E parallel, the electric field that's basically just due to the battery and charge gradients. And then try both cases, meaning try positives moving one way or negatives moving the other and see which gives you the correct Hall effect voltage. So let's start by drawing E parallel. Is E parallel going to be pointing this way or that way? Out towards us or into the board? Out towards us, right? Because here's the positive end, terminal of the battery. Here's the negative. E parallel is that way. Once you draw E parallel, that narrows it down to two possibilities. We could have positive charges moving out or negative charges moving in. Those are the only two possibilities. Let's look at each in turn see which gives us the correct Hall effect voltage. If we have positive charges moving that way, velocity is that way, we have a magnetic field due to the bar magnet that's pointing towards the south pole. What would be dir the direction of the magnetic force? V cross B is actually down. It's actually down, isn't it? So we would get a positive buildup down here, negative buildup up here, does that give us the correct sign? We're connecting the positive to the higher potential, right? Because E perpendicular is now pointing that way. 
positive terminal to the higher potential gives us a positive. Does that work out? Yeah, that works out. That works out. So it must be the case that these are positively charged holes. Just to do the contrasting case, let's look at negatives. If we had negative charges moving that way, the direction of the magnetic force would be V cross B is up, but it's a negative charge, so the force would be down. You'd get a buildup then of negative charge on the bottom, positive charge up top. By rights, we should get a negative voltage, right? Because in this case, we'd have the positive terminal connected to the negative or the lower potential, but we don't. We get a, we're getting a higher, uh, a positive potential difference. So this is ruled out, okay? So trying, drawing electric field and then draw, trying both cases is the first step for doing any of these types of problems. We'll do the rest of this next time.